and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Later in the programme, we speak to the experts to hear the facts on coronavirus, pollution and climate change. Probably the impact of the shutdown of economic activities on the levels of atmospheric CO2 will be very small. But first, the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. Here in Europe in March, average temperatures were almost two degrees Celsius above the 1981 to 2010 average. The figures are even more extreme in parts of Ukraine and Russia. In Ukraine, they had temperatures up to six degrees higher than average in March and in Russia up to eight degrees higher than average. And those areas are also drier than you would expect. We can see that soil moisture and relative humidity are down for the time of year. March is a good time to look at ice in the Arctic as it's the time when sea ice cover is at its highest. And if we look at this map, you can see the entire Arctic region. These areas in red are areas where there's less ice than you'd expect for the time of year. Here around Svalbard, there's actually more ice than you would expect. Generally, the trend is down. Here we can see anomalies since 1979. And we can see that we now have 6% less sea ice than you'd expect, although there's plenty of variability there too. Now to our report, and I set out to investigate what impact the COVID-19 pandemic is really having on our environment. And I spoke to leading experts via video conference. Here's what I found. It feels like Europe has come to a standstill. Streets normally filled with vehicles are empty as countries effectively shut down. Surely this has to be good for the environment. In some ways, yes. Images from the Sentinel 5P satellite show how nitrogen dioxide air pollution levels have plummeted across France and Italy. City air is cleaner. It's good news for now. I don't think we can say that there is any long-term significance of this, uh, of this decrease. However, in the short term, I think this decrease uh, are, are useful. The level of uh, air pollution is affecting uh, cardi cardiopulmonary health in general. So uh, having less pollution at a time where uh, this virus is, uh, is around is, is, uh, can only be a, a, a good thing. And there could possibly be another benefit of today's lower air pollution, as there's a chance COVID-19 may be transported on particles of pollution. There's no scientific consensus, but some experts think it's likely. Particulate matter, when it's a certain density, there is a lot of smog, a lot of atmospheric pollution, can be considered a sort of highway for the acceleration of the epidemic. So a cut in short-term air pollution is considered positive. However, despite the economic slowdown, greenhouse gases are still being emitted and carbon dioxide levels are at record highs. If we look at how the levels of atmospheric CO2 are formed, it's not the particularly annual emissions which are controlling the level, it's a whole accumulation of CO2 in the atmosphere since pre-industrial time, which actually forms the current level. So the reduced emissions within one particular year of this scale are very unlikely to have an impact on global levels of carbon dioxide. This coronavirus pandemic has had an immediate and significant impact on our personal and work environments. But what about the environment? The lesson learned uh, once we will have this, uh, this crisis uh, behind us will be very important to think again the problem of uh, air pollution. Unfortunately, uh, climate change uh, is around and will still be around. Uh, and will not really be changed by this, uh, by this crisis. And one last point, there have been a lot of questions about whether the virus will disappear once the summer weather comes along. The answer isn't clear. We don't have enough information yet, and there are so many variables, including how you and I behave. So stay safe, and I'll see you next time.